what is the how did you did you resolve the sorry. number three sorry about that guys my internet went out and i'm using my my cell phone data i don't know what happened maybe a power outage but okay sorry maria back to back to your to your topic mm -hmm. okay so um and we are looking at the exercises and all you have to do is uh, remember just put in a comma so for example mm -hmm. Uh, what are the relative clauses? They're all the words that contain, that we can think of like a WH, but not a question. So if we can have, we can have, for example, the word which, we can have the word that, where, mm -hmm. who, when, all of these different words, okay? These are the ones that we use. Um, when I came in right now, I heard you mention the uh, three points, Three, sorry, or, or uh, exercise three, is that correct? 3.2, exercise three. Okay. Because I, I, I put the commas after Busan or Busan, I don't know. No, Busan, that's not comma, correct. That's not. Which is the port city, comma. No, that's so not correct. Will be the... That's why it's, that's why it's marking it wrong because it's not after busy. Mm-hmm. Remember the relative oh, no. clause? After after Busan, well, no. Busan how do you no. pronounce them? No. no, 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 no. After city. Uh, only one comma. Yes, no. one comma. In a period. Mm -hmm. in the because period. there is the word is that. It's, it's not in the middle. There it's at the end. Mm -hmm. Coach, uh, I, I, I wanted to tell you something. I was... I was asked to take over a small group uh, to teach them English, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being a chicken and I, I don't know if I'm ready for it. You're never ready for it, that you just have to do it. Yes, and I'm thinking about, you know, what about the material and all of that stuff. It's like, yeah, no, you're never ready for it. It's just like, you know, it's, it's just like getting married or, or, or buying a car. You're not ready. You don't know all of the work that's involved in maintaining a car, maintaining a relationship, maintaining a relationship with students, uh, finding what works for them, changing their needs, making sure that you are there to help them. You'll never be ready. But if you don't do it, you'll never improve. So you I, was asked to, I was asked to bring the resume. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. The, how do you? Different That's way to call it? A curriculum? Uh, CV? Curriculum? Mm -hmm. Okay, CV. Yeah, sounds that that's that's the word they use here in El Salvador. CV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I can bring it there tomorrow, but yeah, you I don't can. Know, teach me. All you can do. What what can you lose? You only yes. lose your the only thing you lose is your fear. And the only thing you can have to gain is experience. Because you know, I teach a small group the at EFOS. The money as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't lose money. That's see the thing. The thing, money is not the issue. The issue is that. Uh, but it's the most important thing. <laughs> no, no. Is is what's important is the, the the students they 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 need to learn, okay? Because you have to give them what what they pay for, or or not what they pay for, but you have to teach them for their time. You know what I mean? You have to make sure that they are learning and they are making progress. It's not just stepping into a room with a group of people and you just tell them whatever they want to, you know, it's like, it's like once you step in there, you start caring for them. And, and that's, that's, that was, I, I help uh, a group already and they did make progress. And that made me feel really, really good. When I left, they were all like, thank you. You know, uh, you help, uh, you help us a lot. And, each one was able to like say, you know, thank you and say some words. And it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know, more afraid, I guess. Yeah, it's just about fear. Don't worry about it. It's part of the life. You got to do it, man. Go for it. Nothing. You don't lose anything, but you know, all you do is gain experience and you discover something about yourself. You discover whether you're a teacher, you discover whether you can do it. It's not for everybody. You know, it's, it's not, 
sometimes you like it and then you say, hey, this is for me. Sometimes you don't like it and say, okay, but you, all you do is try to do your best. That's all you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I, I want to, I want to, it's like. No, then just go ahead. Don't worry about it. You get, you got it. You do it, get some experience at the end. It's how long is the course? Four weeks? No, no, this, this course, I think it's six months long. Okay. Every Saturday or every day or what? Only on weekends. Yeah. Saturdays, exactly. Saturdays and Sundays. And then you're going to learn a lot. Yeah. You just have yeah. to think of it this way. It's not, you need to prepare a lot before you go to the class. So yeah. you, ha you have to be prepared that it's going to probably take you more time in looking for, investigating, finding, researching, creating, and yeah. having this portfolio. Maybe it's going to take you four hours just to give a four hour class or something like this. Right. All right. Well, all right, let's, let's go ahead. Maria, uh, is okay? Did we, get, we answered your questions? Yes, see, I'm, I'm having issues with the number five. Because what? I put the comma after city. Montreal is a sophisticated city. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, I think that doesn't sound logical to me, that comma. For, for me, should not have a comma. <laughs> but, but I don't know where I should put it or have it correct. So, wait. So, for number five, you put a comma mm -hmm. after city. Uh -huh. And then what happened? I don't like how it sounds. Did you check it? No, I will do it right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sometimes okay. I lose my time because I begin yeah. to do it. That's an, I don't like how it sounds. <laughs> but That's okay. But it's remember. Not about how you gotta, I like it. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's just. The, that's it. That's the grammar. Only check it. No problem. All right. Before we continue on for today's topics, um, any other questions about the platform? Any exercises or anything? Yeah, correct. So, teacher, yeah. go ahead. Well, everybody's okay. We're all up to unit three, right? We're all progressing. Everybody cut at least is on unit three over the weekend. On the 3.5, the listening exercise, I have a real issue. I had a real issue with the part two because uh -huh. it's an open answer. You must type all the, all the situations they... In the in the in the audio, they are talking Ma about. A Ma Maria, did you you did you didn't come to class on Friday, right? The whole week, I. The couldn't. whole week, right? You couldn't. Did you watch mm -hmm. the videos? Yes, and I and I heard the the audios. Okay, because we we have that we all of these we already we mentioned the answers in in the videos. The videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already put the answers in there. I'll put them here again, but that way you know uh, exactly that one. Exercise number two, we mm -hmm. we we talked about it and we put it because the, someone had an issue and we tried different orders and different words and those were those were the exact words in that order that you include. I think Eric, I think Eric had mentioned that he tried to do it in a different word. For example, for a landmark, he had used something else, um, if I remember correctly. My my first mistake was that I used uh, capital letters in architecture. Okay. Nightlife. Always the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. A sure thing. No problem. Anybody else? Any other words? Or any other sections? No, let's go ahead, teacher. All right, perfect. So now we're going to look at the order of modifiers. Today, we're looking at 3.7. Can you, can, Jose, can you put your microphone on mute? Um, yes. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. So. As I was mentioning, we're looking at uh, modifiers, okay? And what exactly are modifiers? They're the ones that tells us a little bit more about something, like um, usually a noun, an adjective. So what we're gonna do is we have a small video. Um, it's not too long, but it'll explain specifically what is the correct order for the different modifiers.
Let's continue talking about places. I think Antigua Guatemala is a pintoresque, a small old town with an incredible history. Order of modifiers. We will begin this lesson by reminding you about adjectives. What are adjectives? Adjectives are words that describe or tell about nouns or pronouns. They make sentences more interesting. They give details that make your meaning clearer. They tell what kind or how many. Now, when two or more adjectives modify a noun, they must follow a particular order. Adjectives or modifiers follow this particular order. Opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, purpose, and the noun. Let's talk about each one. Opinion. An opinion adjective explains what you think about something. Often people may not agree with you. Examples. Silly. Beautiful. Horrible. Difficult. Size. A size adjective, of course, tells you how big or small something is. Examples. Large. Tiny. Enormous. Little. Age. An age adjective tells us how young or old something or someone is. Examples, ancient, new, young, old. Shape. A shape adjective describes the shape of something. Examples, square, round, flat, rectangular. A color adjective, of course, describes the color of something. Examples, blue, pink, reddish, gray. Origin. An origin adjective describes where something comes from. Example, French, lunar, American, Eastern, Greek. Material. A material adjective describes what something is made from. Examples, wooden, metal, cotton, paper. Purpose. A purpose adjective describes what something is used for. These adjectives often end up with ing. Examples, a sleeping, as in sleeping bag, roasting, as in roasting tin, and then the noun. The noun, the figure that is receiving the adjectives. Now, take a look at some examples of sentences using adjective order. Silly, young, English man. Huge, round, metal, bowl. Small, red, a sleeping bag. Old, green, wicked witch. Now that you know about modifiers, try to write a couple of sentences using as many as possible. Then, share them with your class. Okay. So what are we looking at? What's the main idea? The main idea is to know that we have many words that we can use to describe and we have many different functions for those words. We can use the words to give our opinion, to describe a color, to talk about the size. But the important is that all of those have a specific order. If we're looking, one more time, here, or in the WhatsApp group, if you are looking at the list of the orders, we can see that we start off with the opinion, okay? They tell, let's talk about each one. Okay, so first is your opinion, whatever it is. It can be something that's nice, um, beautiful, pretty, whatever. All, we can have the age, you can have the shape. You can include all of them if you want to in a sentence. It's not normal, uh, but you, you can include them. But whatever you include, it's in this order. So as an example, you will never say the color first and then say the size. So you're not gonna say a blue big uh, bag. You're gonna say a big blue bag, okay? You're never gonna say, um, you know, uh, uh, a blue beautiful car. You're gonna say a beautiful blue car or things like that. 
So the idea or the function of all of these orders of modifiers is really just to give us, it's the technical name, but it's just using our adjectives, using our expressions or opinions to describe something. And what can you describe? Well, here it says a noun. So that means we can describe a person, a place, a thing. We can describe any, any noun. That's anything that we want, but it needs to be in that specific order. So I can describe Oscar's uh, wall. I can describe uh, Angela's, uh, you know, hair. I can describe Eric's bedroom. I can describe whatever I want. But the important is that whatever I choose to describe, it has to be within that order. Okay. And what is the order? Well, if I have an opinion, that's fine. If I don't have an opinion, then I go directly to size. Okay. What is size? For example, big, small, large. Okay. When we talking about, many times people confuse size and shape. Size is just the space. The shape is the design. Is it circular? Is it square? Is it rectangular? It, this is the idea. Okay. So what we want to do is in real, in reality, most people or most sentences do not have more than three modifiers. You normally don't say more than three. You normally say one, two, sometimes three, like, oh, Roxana, that's a beautiful new purse or beautiful uh, red shoes, right? We don't normally have more than three. We can, we can, but it's just not so common because normally you have your opinion, then you have whatever it is that you're talking about. Many times you're talking about uh, something the size, oh, that's a, a beautiful small or beautiful big or a beautiful large new house, okay? It's not so common that's a beautiful uh, large, you know, yellow house. Mm, it can be, but it's normally not, you know, it's normally only three. So in order to do the next exercise with our partners, we want to try to keep it realistic and, and realistically we don't use more than three, right? So we're going to try to maintain it at three. So with your partners, you're going to, dis I'm, yes. Excuse me. Yes, Why wicked is a purpose? Wicked which in wicked which? Wicked? Uh, I don't know. I, it doesn't seem to me that a that purpose is a purpose. Describes what something is used for. A sleeping bag, a roasting, a roasting tin. Um, let me go to the end. Let me, let me go, let me go towards the end. Maybe it's in the little chart. Ah, okay. A wicked old green witch, a old green wicked witch. So, Medium, your question or, or your statement is, you think medium, the wicked should be um, in the opinion. And in the opinion, I, I think, because it's not a purpose. Or how do you explain that? No, I, I guess you could have it as, as an opinion. It's if you want to, it can also be the purpose. Uh, um, like, um, I guess it would be kind of like a doctor. What's the doctor's purpose is healing or uh, saving someone's life. So I guess in this case, they just put it as wicked, but you're right, uh, wicked as a purpose, but you're right. I would, I would use wicked as my opinion because it's all about how you look at it, right? For like in the Wizard of Oz, for the monkeys, the witch was, was good. She gave them food, she treated them well, she protected them. So. It all depends on how you use. And remember that many times you have the same word, but the same word can be used differently. It can be used as an adjective. It can be used as a noun. And here they, they decided to use it as purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so what we're gonna do is in our partners, we're gonna describe things, okay? We just wanna describe a couple. The best way to think about it is we're gonna describe, um, I'll put it here in the chat so that it's clear, so that it's easier for you to think of. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so we're gonna describe, um, it doesn't have to be all of them, but you're gonna choose, you have three choices. You can describe places you have visited, things that you have bought, or landscapes. What are landscapes? Landscapes are things that you have seen, such as, you know, maybe a mountain, uh, waterfall, um, San Salvador, the volcano, things like this. The idea is so that we have the opportunity to use our adjectives in something constructive. So imagine you're describing your country, you're describing your product, you're describing whatever it is to someone that doesn't have a Zoom, to somebody who's on the telephone. They don't have a video chat with WhatsApp. They just have the phone at home right and you're calling them and you say hey hey how are you angela how are you sandra hey um you know I, I i went to the beach today and i saw a beautiful or i saw a horrible or i saw a wonderful whatever it is that you have remember if you have your opinion that's where you begin that's how you start if you don't have an opinion i saw a big blue whale Okay, you have no opinion. You don't care if it's beautiful. You don't care if it's ugly. You don't care if it's pretty. You're just describing. Excuse me. So the idea is to be able to describe something. Okay. Are there any questions what we're going to do with our partners? No, teacher. Okay. Let's get started then. Okay. Okay. Uh, teacher, I have a, a question with yeah, the order. With mm -hmm. the order, uh, I I think that I heard you say a a beautiful blue beautiful wave. No, a beautiful a beautiful blue, big blue, blue gray. Uh huh. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh -huh. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. It was a beautiful big blue whale. Beautiful, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, beautiful because it's your opinion, right? Uh -huh. Big because of the size, blue the color, and whale well uh -huh. is the noun, right? Okay, yes, I, I was confused, so that, that's the order. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, my pleasure. So that's it, it's just practicing the different ones. And the idea is, you, okay. you, what you want to do is, you want to try to make sure that you use different ones. Don't get used to only using, um, you know, color, or don't get used to only using, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, the, the size, <laughs> whatever you're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, let's start then. Um, let us like it's like cotton i don't know i i'm seeing like the examples because the, the material is like really soft so what be pink soft and comfy okay sounds good mm, let me see talk about landscape um Landscape, it means uh, pretty much like a place that I have visited, but the structure, right? Or what it looks like, I think. I what think landscape? Uh, landscape, I think it's a uh, paisaje. It's like. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember that it was um, something like a place that uh, is like that you don't have to, to describe it a lot to people to understand the um, which one are you talking about like you say salvador del mundo is a landscape because everybody like can like knows oh no no uh -huh. that's Marce, that's no. that's landmark, landmark. Um, mm -hmm. landscape uh, no. will it be will it be landscape uh like uh what the place look like like a description or like that's correct if it's if it's like a 
like a grass greenery and and a lot has... of trees or you know water or oh it was like a medium saying yes. that it was like a paisaje yes that's right for for the landscape yes for the landmark it's like what you explained oh, okay thank you you're welcome okay. all right so and Elias, uh, you wanna give us an example using the modifiers? Modifiers, uh, teacher? Modifiers you with modifiers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Modifiers. <laughs> okay, yeah. I would like to to see a beautiful uh, rain land you saw today. I don't know what did you see the, the rainbow? Sorry, where? What time? I think. Uh, no, time. Did you see the rainbow? Uh, excuse me. Sorry, I can hear you. Uh, the question is, what? Uh, what time did you see the rainbow? The rainbow today. Oh, I... A little, yeah, totally. It was very, very expensive, and uh, it cost. Uh, um, I don't remember if 400 or 600. Ask, ask Mr. Quiz if it's valid the reddish word or, 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 or if there's something uh, similar to it. To which, yeah. to which word, Jose? Sorry? Which word? Which, which, uh, which one? I couldn't hear you exactly what you no said. Problem. I, I, which word? Oh, okay, which word? I was talking about uh, say rojizo. I don't know if it is reddish or ready or ready. I don't remember exactly the word. You can use say it. you can use reddish. Yeah? Reddish. Oh, wow. Reddish, right? Yeah. Yes. Ooh, yes, I was yes. I was I was thinking about uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, reddish. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was a reddish a reddish a reddish small guitar because it had I don't remember if they, it had um, 19, 19, uh, 19, I don't remember, it's flats or uh, I forgot the name of for trastes in English. <laughs> trastes, but, like plates, dishes? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, for, no, 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 trastes for an uh, instrument, guitar, the spaces oh. into the, the, yeah, into the, the guitar that we, that we, uh, that we press on. In order the to, end of the, to of the end. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, but I don't, I don't remember exactly the name for that part of the guitar in English. Okay, but but yeah, you remember it is it, it's, it's okay, but you're going to put uh, the color after the size, so it's not going to be a red oh, right. small guitar. It's going to be a small. It's a small reddish, reddish guitar. guitar. Exactly, oh, right. exactly. The size is first. Oh, right. Size is first. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Go ahead, Ernesto. That has a big old red car. It is not that easy, right? If you want to use a, yeah, a classical. If you want to use three adjectives, I, I guess the, the most common way is like the teacher said, using two at least. But sometimes you don't, uh, you don't, you don't care about the others. Uh -huh. and yeah, I don't, I don't know if you use only one, maybe two. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just one, maybe two. Normally, mm -hmm. people, most people use two, and then commonly they go to three. But normally two because you say, "Oh, that's beautiful, uh, red, whatever, or beautiful green something, or beautiful new, you know, whatever they say." So most common is the two, because you don't normally say that's a beautiful, you know, shoe. You normally say that's a beautiful. A new shoe or beautiful red shoes or beautiful purple jacket or, or something like this right but like I said that's why we practice in with three because the one is very easy that's the one almost always we just give our opinion that's nice that's pretty yeah. that's cute two a little bit more common but three is where we have to think about because now you have to think about the order for the different things you have to think about when it's correct to use the color then the you know when it's correct to use the age or the size or the different things and isn't yes. in reality the people are going to understand you but it doesn't sound right it doesn't sound right when you yeah. put in in the incorrect order 
of course, all of them have, you know, the same meaning. You're going to say, oh, the people are going to understand me. Yes, but it's like in Spanish. If you say uh, salt and pepper and pepper and salt, the two are correct, but mm, one doesn't sound natural. One just sounds bad. And most people don't yes, know why. Right. Because most Americans or most Canadians, they don't know what is the correct order. But they know when they hear, hmm, something's not right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, like it is me, kind but of, I uh, don't like how the right. camera sounds. Yeah, like, like, my, <laughs> like, like, like think about pupusas. What do you like? Do you like pupusas with cheese and beans? Or do you get pupusas with beans and cheese? Beans and cheese. Exactly. It, it, it's yes. just a habit. You, the people don't say, I want cheese and beans. Mm -hmm. It, you know? Mm -hmm. Or the same for the pizza, right? You, you say, oh, I want a, a pepperoni and cheese pizza. No, a cheese and pepperoni pizza. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. It's, and, and even in Spanish, I say, why? Why is correct one and not the other? I don't know, but it's for the sound. Exactly. It does. It doesn't sound <laughs> natural. <laughs> but like, uh, like our yes. famous cheese, duro blandito. It doesn't sound the same blandito duro. It, ah, <laughs> yeah. And it's the duro same. Blandito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But grammatically, there's a rule. But in reality, you you don't memorize the rule. You remember the sounds, how the rhythm goes, and that's the important. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the advice, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome. Grow up, but um, hey, teacher, so fast. Hey, hey Hi, Stephanie, teacher. you're not cold anymore, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not cold <laughs> anymore. <laughs> We're talking so, about Angela. how Sally's like being an adult like us, Mister Edwin. <laughs> how what? How sad it is to be an adult like you? Yes, like like us. Why? It shouldn't be sad. You should be happy to be an adult. I mean, it's it's kind of tricky. We can be happy, but at the same time, I think that we can have like this dichotomy. How do you say dichotomy? Dichotom? Dichotom. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the dichotom to to be happy and to be sad, but. We just need to like focus on, on being happy, like trying to to be successful. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you a secret. Maybe it's not maybe not big or not small, but one thing that I learned. Um when I was young, I used to make a lot of money. And mm -hmm. I had I used to make more money maybe twenty, thirty years ago than I do today. I used to make thousands of dollars uh, a month and I had, a, I had very good, a very, what people consider a very successful position, very successful job, uh, a good stability, a lot of benefits, um, but it was money. I wasn't, I didn't care about the job. I didn't care about the customers or the clients that I had. I cared about money and the, I had to do the job to get money. And with the money, I bought happiness. I bought drinks. I bought restaurants. I bought cars. I had cell phones. I had my own apartment. When I was 17, I lived by myself because I had so much money. I could pay for my own apartment. There was three floors. With uh, We had one basement, two floors, two bathrooms. It, had, it was amazing. And, and I lived by myself. And all my friends were like, wow. And we had a party, but I wasn't happy. <laughs> because it was i was i was going for the money so after many years of going for money and buying things and i bought expensive watches and i bought expensive coats and i bought spend my money with throwing it on friends and different things on trips and vacation but in the end really really i changed my life when i found something that made me happy every day and the money you're always going to make money it doesn't matter what you do in life. It doesn't matter what job you take. You're always going to make money, but you're not always going to be happy making the money. So it's better to find something that you're passionate about, find something that makes you happy so that every day it's not a job. It's not work. 
me giving a class, it's not a problem. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. something, it's not something I hate. It's not something like, oh my God, it's eight o'clock. Oh, I have to log in. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't wait to finish the class. Oh, 847. Oh no, 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 no. Hey, 13 more minutes. No, it's not. I don't care. It doesn't bother me because in the end, I always make money. It doesn't matter what I do. If you are good in your profession, it doesn't matter what profession you have. If you are the best in your profession and you become the best because you are passionate about it, because you love it, because you really are inspired to do something in that. And you can be inspired because it fulfills you. You can be inspired because you help others. You can be inspired for different reasons. But if you find something that you are inspired with, believe me, you're going to be the best in your field, the best in your area, and you're always going to make some of the best money. So it's not like a question about money. The pandemic is here. It's difficult to find a job, but it's not about finding a job. It's about finding a passion, something that motivates you. And then the money will come. Well, first, yes, you're right, I feel I need something that can motivate me. <laughs> right. Yeah, it took me a long time. It took me a long time to find it. I thought money was the key. Everyone told me, my parents told me, my family told me, find a job, find something that make money, you, uh, get a career where it's going to pay you, get, get a job, get something that you can make money from. And then I realized that, you know what? I can make money anywhere. I was in high school. I was in high school and my mm -hmm. job, in my job, I make more money than my teachers. And my teachers went in my job. And they say, wow, how do you do it? And, and then in my school, I was voted most likely to succeed and most likely because I was making money when I was so young. And, but it's just money. It comes, it goes. Sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. But I'm always happy now. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it makes life easier. But, you know, nobody said life was going to be easy. Life is not meant to be easy. My life is yes, meant to be fulfilling. Yes, and as you said, um, money can buy happiness. Yeah. Yeah, I was happy with the things at the time, but in the end, when all my friends went home, the party finished, the drinking, the alcohol stopped, the, the shopping, the things stopped, and then what? Yeah. <laughs> I had to go back to work the next day. And the next day, I hate going to work. I hated Monday. I hated Monday. Waking up and, ah, oh, I have to go visit. I have to go to see this client. I have to go to the office. I have to do, I know. I hate it. So, no. no I, I think that the problem is not about the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, the material, how, how, how we see it. It's just paper, right? I think that what is overrated, it's the money, but what it's underrated is like how we think to get the things. I mean, how, how yes, how we need to act, how we need to be, and how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's just a mentality issue because most, mm -hmm. most parents or most ways that you are taught in the school in El Salvador is find a job. You do this not because you like it, but because you're going to make money from it. Don't study English because you, it's something you're passionate about. Study English because it's what the world uses. Study English because that's what you need in society to succeed. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of people that don't speak English and they're successful. So it's not yeah, about... Yes. In my case, I don't know. Uh, I think that sometimes we are free to choose what, whatever we want, but sometimes we are attached to to do the things that we really want. In my case, um, I have a, a pretty great case with my family. Um, so with my with my dad, I can say he's dead. So he left. Uh, I don't know how to how to how do how do we say testimonial. Testamentos. Will? A will? A will, yeah, a will. So imagine, I have always been passionate about art. So I would love to be an artist. I would love to be someone who the rest of my life will be painting or drawing. But I can't. 
because my father told that if I don't have a career, at least five, yeah, at least with five years, I don't have like the right to have the things that are mine. That's fine. Find something that complements your passion. No. <laughs> yeah, you're an artist, right? No, I mean. You love art. Not, you love to be paint, to draw these different techniques. So study, yeah. study graphic design. But, I mean, I could have, but it's not the art that I, I want or the art that I was expecting, you know? I, I'm not saying that, but it's not something that I was interested in. When I when I was uh, when I I think about art, it's not like the, the thing you said. That I don't remember. <laughs> graphic design. Yeah, graphic design. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have the time to think. Because every, everything happened too fast. I, I was in my in my I was in my last year. I, no, no. Yeah, I was in my last year at school. So I, I didn't have a lot of time to decide. And if I had time, I, I had this, this, lapse, this, this lapse of month, we can say, okay. to don't know what to do, to don't know what to choose, to don't know what, to, what I would like to do. I don't know what my, what is calling me. So. Well, as soon as you get your inheritance and your will, Take one year and discover yourself. Why not? Why? Who says you have to work when you finish university? There's no law that says you have to go to work. Just discover yourself. But, but uh, what I want to do in my life it is not, I mean, we need money to have the things that we want. But not exactly like well i would like a car i would like a house obviously we all we i think that we we have in common to to like those things right to not have a problem to I don't, well i have to pay rent rent no sometimes like something that it's for us you know but um I, I would like to say, but I, I don't like to say it, that I, I need money to... <sighs> I don't know how to say it. I would like the money to, to succeed in life, but not maybe as you, as you think. I mean, like, at the end, I choose <laughs> chemical engineer. engineer. So, about what final situation? Well, because I want to make our country a better place, a sustainable development, and a country where, you know, can be like our America, where our life can be better and where people can reach the things easily as they possibly can because not everyone have the financial um, situation, like Bukele can or like, I don't know who else, right, comparing. But at the end I choose like making a better place me, uh, to have a country jobs so people can find somewhere to work and not to be preoccupied and other things among that. <laughs> Don't worry, Angela, you're still young. You still have time to discover and find passion. I, I understand your situation. I, uh, my family told me that if I decided to be a teacher or decided to change my, that I would not get any, any of my family's support or help. And, you know, sometimes you just have to say, okay, I'm going to begin my own life. It's, you know, it, it is what it is. Yes, I also never give up. Yeah, that's it. You know, but, you know, as long as you're happy, 
I think it doesn't really matter. The, the important is that in the end, you find something that you're happy about because if you always do what other people want or if you always do what is expected of you or you always do what someone else should thinks you should do, you're never going to do what you want. You're never going to be happy and you're never going to find your passion. So finish your career, get your thing and discover yourself. Don't get a job. Don't look for it. Just find out who Angela is. Who's Angela Martinez? Is she an artist? Is she a designer? Is she an NGO worker? Is she a volunteer? Is she a nun? Is she a doctor? What is she? You never know. You never know. <laughs> People thought I was going to be a stock market. I, I used to work for in, in stocks. I used to work for Wall Street and, and, and you know, and I used to do things like this. And people thought, oh my God, you're gonna be a millionaire. And yeah, I could have been, but <laughs> you know. It's more of a hobby now. It's not just something that I do. So don't worry about it, Angie. You'll discover it. I believe you're welcome. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, it's amazing how fast the time has gone by. I thought that you only practiced a little bit. I felt that we didn't, it was just a few sentences and a couple of orders um, that we have. I think we need to practice a little bit more tomorrow and to hear everybody using them. Um, as I, we discussed in several groups, several groups uh, noticed that using one or two, it's easy. But once you start using three or more, oof, somehow it becomes very complicated. And suddenly you're thinking about, oh, my God, the color, the size, which is first? The age? I mean, is it new, beautiful blue? Or is it beautiful blue, new? Or is it, uh, you know, <laughs> new blue? What, what happened? So don't worry about it. It's about... It's we have to, to watch more frequently the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> and here's Sheldon speaking. <laughs> something like this something like this it's just about practicing all right guys so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna go ahead and continue tomorrow keep working in the platform and like i say if you have any questions ask and many times we'll be able to answer them sometimes we have already answered but always ask never be scared to ask and we'll that's why we're here to support each other so you know all right guys have a great night have a great night, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.